up y'all so i wanted to talk to you guys today about the gre i know you've seen some of my videos like everything you need to know about the gre in eight minutes and if you have not already seen that go ahead take a look at that video um and then you can come back to this video because I had a question posed about when is the best time to take the GRE. So that is what I'm going to be answering in today's video. Let's get into it right now. What's up, y'all? It's Adana. Welcome back to my channel. So like I said, I had the question posed, when is the best time to uh, take your GRE? Now, obviously, this is going to be relative to you all, but since you're asking me, um, I'm going to give you my opinion on when I believe the best time it is to kind of take the GRE. Uh, now, the GRE is used for grad school in general, so it's not just for PA school. So if you're taking the GRE to get into grad school to do you know, I don't know, like an MBA or something like that, or to get your doctorate for whatever it is that you're studying. Um, this may not necessarily hold true to you, but I still think it's pretty um, on par, like across the board with anything, because it gives you time like for contingencies right to time to kind of assess when you expect something to happen a certain way and it doesn't quite happen the way that you expected it to it gives you the opportunity to now like kind of rectify that situation now uh, as i stated in my like pre pre thing the jerry is still the major like go-to test for PA school. We do have the PA cat and Casper the PA cat is more just science-based GRE has a lot of math in it um, so that's why some schools are kind of moving away from it because it's not really an assessment of all of your science-based knowledge which is what you really need when getting into PA school and going through PA school and then obviously becoming a provider um, you're gonna need to know all of like the building blocks the basics of life and then how we build on that and so that is why people are moving more towards the PA cap but there are still lots of schools requiring or highly recommending the GRE. So for those of you who are applying to schools like that, um, I think it's important for you to first and foremost assess when you're going to apply to that program. So if you're applying to the program, as soon as CASPA opens up in April, then I feel like the benchmark time, like just across the board, when you should apply um, and take your GRE is six months before your application. Now, six months, I don't know why do you say six months? Um, I say six months because I think that it's important for you to have enough time to not only study for the exam, but like I said, if the exam does not quite go like how you expected it to go, it gives you the opportunity to now retake the exam, like restudy again, you know, study and look at things that you may not have felt comfortable on before, um, and then take the exam over. The GRE is good for five years. That's 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 it. Five years, right? And hopefully in that time you would have, you know, gotten better, you would have gotten into PA school, you know, and you know, be well on your way to becoming or you're already a PA. However, that's not always the case. So six months is the benchmark. You study for three months, you take the GRE, and then you still have three months, you know, depending on what score you get to either study again or, um, you know, you're just kind of already prepared and you're sending in your information to CASPA. But this way, this allows you enough time to send your scores to CASPA. It takes about two weeks, um, sometimes even longer, sometimes up to four weeks for CASPA to verify all of your um, application information. And because of that, that's why that little other three month buffer is important. Okay, so for me, if you're asking me, Adana, when the best time to take your GRE is, I would say within a, like a six month period before you actually need the exam. Because you need to be able to have those contingencies in place just in case things don't go exactly as planned. Okay, so if you guys have any other questions for me, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram at Don PA and on Instagram at Get That C University. And join me throughout the week as I continue to put more shorts out. Um, check out my most recent short, especially if you're female from the age group of 21 to 65, because um, we're talking about your cervix and um, cervical health. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. 